So this is this has become an interesting experience with this guitar since I recorded that intro. Some things have occurred, which um, I've turned it into a bit of a bit of a weird one, to be honest with you. just something about Gibsons that keeps drawing me back to them. And these are made properly, they're absolutely fine. There's no problem with them whatsoever. takeaway from this well that's the important thing that I'm I'm making a film that I didn't want to make to say Gibson QC is rubbish <laughs> hi everyone thank you for clicking through today another guitar arrived which we've been uh, eyeing up for for some time it's the, it's the Gibson original Les Paul Jr. in a marvellous ebony with a tortoiseshell scratch plate. <laughs> Sorry for butting in. Uh, some of you may have noticed already, we're less than a minute in and um, looking at the film, there appears to be scratching on the body of the guitar. Um, now, I haven't noticed this yet because uh, uh, under the bright video lights, um, I can't see it. And I've also uh, got my rose tinted spectacles on at this point. So I will carry on for a little bit regardless. And um, we'll get into this a little bit later on when I have noticed. Scratch plate. Uh, I adore the color of this guitar. Let's have a look and see what it's like. So, smells. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here. I can smell it already. That vanilla smell that comes with new Gibson guitars these days is really overpowering. And maybe it's um, maybe they put something in it. It's a kind of an addictive. It's an addictive thing that that makes you want to buy Gibson guitars. There's certainly something it, 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 for me. However much I might rave about Epiphones and Squires and affordable guitars, the call of the Gibson logo and, and holding and owning a genuine Gibson guitar is still very strong for me. And um, there's just something about Gibsons that keeps drawing me back to them. Sometimes it's very disappointing you know, you, you get a new guitar from Gibson and in the past, straight away, there have been problems with it. You know, tuners that don't work or the, the nuts. The amount of time I've had to replace the, the nut on a new Gibson because it just, because of the, 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 the tuning problems that you get on Gibsons are notoriously, it's, it's always caused by the nut because of the, the break in the headstock angle the strings stick there. So you, you know, you need to replace it with one that's not sticky, basically. I might get into that in another time, but something about Gibsons keeps drawing me back to them and maybe it's the, it's the aroma, but some think the call is strong. Let's have a look at this one. Well, none more black, I would say. It's great, look at that. Nice, okay, cool. Let's have a look at the, let's look at the body. I mean, I'm slightly overwhelmed because the smell of this is intoxicating and the logo on the headstock appears to be intoxicating for me as well. It's a Gibson. 
Oh, uh, sorry, I'm back. You, you may also want to look out for a weird rippling effect on the body of the guitar, which I'm having difficulty explaining. Les Paul Jr. You know, who wouldn't want to own this? The trouble is with these things, they're so bloody expensive nowadays. Um, this I got on a deal, you know, it's been around in the shop for a while, I think. Got this from Peach Guitars up the road from here. And uh, I still paid about 1150 for it. So it's a lot of money for a, for a junior. Um, the, the, the price of guitars nowadays is, is alarming. Made in the USA. Gibson Deluxe Vintage Correct Tuners. There's no bin sticker on this, so presumably they, they think that the, the person that can afford to buy this guitar is sensible enough to know not to put it in a dustbin. Um, it's quite a bit of a weight to this one. It is quite a, quite a meaty, chunky guitar. Thick neck, yeah, neck, neck. Yeah, it's got a proper, yeah, it's got a proper handful. We'll, um, we'll measure the neck, as is our thing nowadays. We'll measure the neck, we'll put the specs up in the film later on, we'll measure the pickup output. So you'll notice the, uh, the wrap over tailpiece on this isn't compensated. It's got no, what they call the lightning bar on it. This is in the original style from the 50s. I think 55 was it? They, they first brought out the Les Paul Junior. Um, it's not, the compensation for this is the angle. And the only adjustment on this is via these grub screws, which are both in place incidentally. So you can just lengthen one side or the other just to adjust it. We'll check the intonation. When these are made properly, they're absolutely fine. There's no problem with them whatsoever. And um, they sound immense, these things. So it all looks good. I'm looking forward to plugging this beauty in. And seeing what it sounds like. So uh, I filmed that intro a couple of days ago and everything was hunky-dory as you can tell. I was absolutely in love with the guitar and intoxicated by it. But I then came to film s s some playtime with it and some suspicions were aroused. I, I sort of went up, uh, straight away I was slightly I was aware that the, the finish of the body was a little bit weird. Certainly, in certain light, certain angles, you could see that there were paint sinkage points on it, I think you probably called them. And I'm, I think we'll probably pick those up on some of the, the, the shots <clears throat> that you've seen already. I'll, I'll try and single some out and show you what I mean. But beyond that, there was, there was quite a lot of scratching on the body, which is was I thought it was a little bit unusual for a brand new guitar. <clears throat> it looked, and it certainly smelt, as you know, it's, it, it smells like a Gibson anyway, but it's, it looked like it had been quite vigorously polished. And, um, you know, I was aware of this, but I just kind of ignored it. But then when you get it under these bright lights and you start to look closely, it, you know, it holds no prisoners and you could see the blemishes on the finish of the body and the scratching on the body was quite severe. It honestly looks like somebody has really taken wet and dry sandpaper to it and not got rid of the, the fine lines or the, the, in, in some cases on this 
finish, the coarse lines that that leaves. So either, so it, it, looked, it looked like it had been messed with. I'll show you some pictures, have a look at this, see what you think. So this is a brand new guitar. I haven't played it. The first time I looked at it was, was on camera with you. So I hadn't played it apart from tuning it up. So the, the scratching was certainly nothing that I'd done. So I thought, oh, this is actually quite bad. So reluctantly, I, I decided to contact the shop and either send it back or see see what they wanted to do about it basically because I thought it, it I thought <laughs> something's wrong here you know surely surely some I, I thought that maybe somebody at the shop had given it a again maybe an ex demo model dirty got some scratching somebody's tried to clear it up clean it up and made a mess of things you know wouldn't be the first time would it so I um I contacted the shop now I've got to say the problem is straight away here that I received this guitar in, in on the 30th of March and it sat downstairs in a box for two weeks in fact 15 days before I unpacked it the reason being as as if you've watched any of these reviews before I like to look at a guitar on camera for the first time because I, I think that it captures my natural reaction to what I'm looking at. I, I was aware straight away that I'd, I'd, I'd push the boundaries of what would probably be acceptable from a, from a retailer in, you know, in a return of a guitar. Two weeks or just over two, it's 15 days, is maybe pushing it a little bit. It, it's not normal for somebody to, to leave a, a guitar like this in, in the box for that amount of time. However, I, I got this from Peach Guitars, as I think I mentioned, and they're local to me, and I'm, I'm what I would say a frequent flyer there. I've bought quite a few guitars there over the last two or three years, and they, they kind of know me, and, um, and I thought, well, you know, I, I'm, sure they'll, I'm sure they'll be realistic about this and um, take a view. Because I didn't want to do this, I didn't want to make a film about how poor Gibson quality control was or whatever it is, because I like Gibsons, I don't want to slag them off. And I thought maybe, you know, it's just something that's happened at the shop, so let's contact them and, and see what they say. So I did, I sent them an email yesterday and um, I explained, and I sent them a couple of pictures of the worst parts, so like this bit here, which is clearly, it's not just a buffing thing, it's like, it's not been cleared properly. And it's like, you can, you know, you, it's only in a certain light you can see these things, but it is there, I can see that there now, I don't suppose you can, but you can see it in the picture, it's clear as day that there's, you know, it's not been finished very well and there's parts on the edge where it's gone right through. So, you know, let's find out what's going on. They, they came back to me fairly quickly and um, I was a bit <laughs> disappointed by their response. Uh, so thanks for sending through the pictures, uh, which a couple of them were looked at. <sighs> These ones. Uh, I would like to assure you that the guitar would have passed through our tech team for a full QC and inspection where they are very meticulous so they've had a proper good look at it and any marks or finishing issues out of the expectancy 
would be picked up and raised uh, with us prior to shipping. Okay. Uh, on review, this actually looks to be what we would expect with these nitro finished guitars. Due to the way the nitro reacts, it is not a perfect finish and is incredibly easy to mark. Let alone being a black guitar, <clears throat> which will show anything and everything, even when brand new. Well, we know that you know black guitars do show marks, but generally we put those on them ourselves. Um, blah 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 blah. So, with that being said, uh, it, it, this does not look out of the ordinary to see for this guitar. Uh, but then, and, then, and obviously, well, and then they say if there were any abnormal scratches or marks, we would notice. We would need to know about this within forty-eight hours of the delivery. Um, they changed that period a little bit later on, but let's not let's not worry about that because it's, it's irrelevant anyway. Um, so uh, I hope that helps, and that's it basically. So that was their first response. this apparently and they didn't see think anything was wrong with it so that is it basically they didn't they did they just said no this is quite normal this is this is this is what guitar should look like when it comes out of the shop with these marks can you you see do you think that looks normal to you it didn't look normal to me so I pushed it a little bit further because as I say I, I felt a sense of entitlement Really, I know I shouldn't. You know you shouldn't. It's a bit of a wanky thing, but you know the amount of guitars that I've bought there, and they, I think they know what I do. The the owner of this shop, John Priest, we follow each other on Instagram, so I thought I'd reach out to John and 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 maybe appeal to his sense of um, fair play. So I sent him a message on Instagram, and he got back to me fairly quickly and uh, asked what the problem was. So I explained and. And he said he'd look into it for me. In the meantime, I got another, I, I got another reply back from the shop. Basically, they and the, and the guy at the shop had said we. I'll put this quote up there because I, I, I like this. It says we take every concern seriously. And I don't want you to think we're being dismissive of your concern. Okay, okay, good. They're taking me seriously, but. From what we can see, this doesn't look to be a cause for concern in terms of how the guitar is finished. So again, they've just confirmed that this is perfectly normal, which surprised me. And then, um, and John Priest, uh, the owner, he, he eventually got back to me as well and he said, no, this is perfectly normal for Gibsons. Um, I can't read verbatim what he said because he had the good sense to, to, to delete the message first thing this morning when we clear we weren't going to come to <coughs> an agreement um, that basically this was perfectly normal for, for Gibsons to be finished this way because of the nitro cellulose that they use to finish them it's notoriously difficult to work with and they see loads of guitars like this come out with scratches on all over all the time it's perfectly normal especially with black guitars because it's, it's difficult to you know, to to hide it on a black finish and there's nothing they can do. And they wouldn't accept a return because it had been over 14 days, but he did have the good grace to offer me a 50 pound credit on my next order. But I politely declined that because I thought it was taking the piss quite frankly. This guitar cost 1,199 pounds and I, 
I don't really know what to think about this now. So I'm saying it, it's normal. It's definitely not something the shop did. They see guitars like this all the time. They didn't think twice about sending it out because they didn't think it was, you know, anything abnormal about it. Well, I mean, I'd say they probably didn't look at it. Although they think they photographed it, so they would have spotted these things. But, you know, where, where there are edges where it's buffed off, there's no, there's no shine on that edge there. It hasn't been buffed up properly to a shine even on the edges there. You can see from the pictures the scratching all on the edges. Should that, is that right for a brand new guitar? You live and learn, and, and what, what is the takeaway from this? Well, that's the important thing, that I'm, I'm making a film that I didn't want to make, to say, Gibson QC is rubbish. Beyond the scratching, the actual finish on this is poor, and you'll see that from the film. It's kind of sinking all over. You know, you can't make excuses that nitrocellulose is very difficult to work with, so you'll have to put up with bad workmanship, you know. We know, we know how to get rid of scratches, buffing scratches. You know, you, you have to use the right papers, the right wheels. You can't, you know, this scratch in the middle here, you know, you can see it. It's dreadful. My love affair with Gibson is over. I expect this will be the last new Gibson that I ever buy and uh, it's probably going to be one of the hardest ones to get rid of it's it, it's well it's 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 been played now for an hour and it looks like a, a year old